Good morning everybody and Pinchy Al here uh, and today we're going to be doing a boost gauge and an air fuel gauge. These guys from Innovate and a boost gauge from uh, Glow Shift. And we have a new south uh, steering column uh, to set up as well. So let's get to work because this is Pinchy Al's garage. First, um, since I have hard lines in my car, this is not going to look the best. I'm not really proud of how this is going to look. I might have to do it a different way later down the road. But what you want to do is on your car, uh, you'll have your fuel regulator. There should be a piece of hose that goes from here down and under the manifold. Um, you want to use that one. You just want to cut it and tee it off. Get yourself a little tee. And then... You're going to tee it off and then you're going to get this right here, a uh, piece of vacuum hose. Um, the thing that you're going to need, you guys are going to need to realize is when you do this, go to the auto parts store and buy a couple different sizes. The size that I'm using is, oh come on, not on here, 4 millimeter right here, or 5 and 30 seconds. Um, um, they call this washer and vacuum tubing this is the stuff that you need to use to um, to splice into your your boost uh, your boost gauge or your fuel air fuel gauge they're not required to have a check valve on here so don't worry about that um, so splice into it wherever you want to put it place it as long as it looks good to you be happy with it um, I should have cut mine down here and then gone across. It would have looked a lot better, but oh well, I did it already. <clears throat> so once you do that, follow pretty much all the way here to your brake booster. Uh, where your brake booster all the way in the back, and there's a hole here. You see that? You might have a grommet over it already. Um, if you don't have the grommet, this is where you're going to feed your boost gauge hose right into there. Just push it all the way down. Once you do that, you have to go inside the cockpit. Now down below here, usually there's T20 or T25 um, screws down here. And they're usually about two to four, um, depending on how... <laughs> used up or broken mine I don't leave mine in here I just pull I don't leave them in because they're just it stays nicely firm in place in here no one will ever see it so pull down once you take the screws out you pull down pops it off and then pull straight out if you can I'll let you there you go and this will expose the bottom portion of your car of your dash now with this all being exposed remember where we ran that tube here it is now, you can pull it all the way through and then figure it out afterwards. Um, since I'm going to be using the steering wheel column cover, this piece up here, uh, you require to take this one off. So we're going to take that off and then pop in the new one. So let's get to that. So now the next step is to, um, you see here you have a little cover for your steering wheel column here. And this just pulls straight out. Pull that out so you have exposed the underneath of your cluster here so you're going to be able to run a rubber hose. Um, I would recommend running it through this side um, and then probably zip tying it to this corner. And then the best way you can tell if you're doing it right, if you, if you unlock your steering wheel, you can be able to for, move it forward back, give yourself the space by pulling the, the lever down here. Pull it down and lock it. 
just like that. That way, it's not in the way. The New South one, I'm actually gonna. I was wrong. This one doesn't actually take place of the top cover. It actually just goes over the top cover, just like this. Come on, just like that. So you are gonna need some double-sided tape along here and here on both sides that way your stuff doesn't wiggle around while it's being moved and this is how it's going to look without you know no two gauges on it but that's kind of the basic look for it the good thing about it it doesn't cover any of your mileage here your time and it still stays centered and kind of decent looking that's a pretty happy with that um so the next thing you're going to do, and I said, you pull this little flat back, and we're going to pay attention to anything in here, like right here on the left or the right, and see where you can run the wire, uh, the wiring and everything, so it doesn't get harmed or affected. I typically run everything on the right side right here, um, and then go underneath and zip tie it across the bottom. We'll show you how to do that, but that's how we're going to run it today. Um, you're going to use your fuse panel, so make sure you take this off. And we're going to show you how to use a voltmeter to look for um, constant and switch 12 volt uh, fuses because we're going to need those uh, for both gauges. Alright, so get your handy dandy voltmeter. I haven't run anything yet, but we need to find what uh, positive and negative we're going to need to use. Uh, set your voltmeter to DC. Right here, if you don't know what DC looks like, it should have a straight line with dots on it. And then you're going to go to your fuse box. Make sure you have your keys in the ignition when you need it. It will beep, so be forewarned. And the next thing is you're going to find a good ground spot, um, which is for your negative. Right here should be a good ground spot if I can find one. Hopefully that works. We'll find out. Now, if there is a a live 12 volt on here, uh, you will see a reading on the voltmeter. And all you can do is click on each pin until you get a live uh, an actual reading. Nothing comes up. Double check your ground. Mm, find another spot for one. Hmm. Maybe somewhere over here. Now, what ground is is a, a raw metal source. Or something with a bolt in. We're gonna see if this works. Retest them. And there we go. We got a reading right there, 12 volts. See that? And this is on the bottom, the first bottom uh, 20 amp source here. So I know now that this is a live wire here. And there's nothing in this one. Nothing in this one. Nothing here. Same goes for this. Same for that. Now, we need a live and a switched one. So, we need actually to find both sources. So, what you're going to do is you're going to turn the car in the on position. And then, that should read 12 volts now. You see that? Same with the next one. If not... There you go, 12 volts. This one over here, no 12 volts, model, probably because it probably needs something else on. It probably controls something else, so when there's a switch kick on, it should give us an answer here. 12 volts now on this one. Same with this. So, pretty much, this is going to be a live feed here. 
12 volts here switch with the ignition on this 15 amp one. We'll double check it, turn the key off, take the key out, get rid of that noise. And it should be a dead, dead. There you go. So now we can use these two. This will be easy and convenient. So this is a live 12 volt and this is a switch 12 volt. We're gonna re we're gonna use these two to wire our um, um, our gauges. So when the cars are on, they light up. When the cars are off, they turn off. Um, if you switch the wires, what happens is that the light will stay on permanently and drain your battery. We don't want that. That's why they give you these uh, the wirings for that. So now that's going to be for two positives. You still need a ground. You need to find yourself a good ground source. Uh, easy way to do that on these cars, this cover right here comes right off. You saw how easy that was. Um, you can use the actual frame of the car right here. Here's a bolt right here you can grab on and you can ground your, um, your gauges to that. Easy, easy way to do that. And you can use that, uh, this frame right here, like I said, uh, that bolt. Um, I'll, we'll show you how to do that when we get to that point. Uh, that way all your wiring goes to one spot and we can ground it all in one nice spot together. Alright, so for this boost gauge from Glowshift, this is a tinted boost, uh, boost gauge. Now I'm going to show you the wiring on it. You'll see here, we have ground. This purple one is the needle. The yellow is the gauge. And then this is your constant. So this is a switch. So this one right here is the switched uh, accessory one. This only kicks on when you turn on the ignition. This is always giving it power. So you have to have these two right here set. Once you do that, you have these two. So these two are going to go into the one that turns on and off. This is the one that's going to go into the one that always stays on. And remember how we showed you with the voltmeter. So, the orange one is actually going to go into the 20 amp that's down here below. The purple and the yellow one is going to go to the 15 amp right above it. Now, obviously this wire is too thick, so we're going to use some, uh, some 12 volt uh, car automotive wire. Yeah, it's the same color. It's going to be yellow on both sides, but really, really simple. As long as you remember what wire is what, run one at a time. If you guys can, I, this is what I have laying around. So this is what I'm going to use. But if I, if you recommend, I recommend that you guys go pick up some wire. And if you don't have it, pick up three different colors. Pick up a black, a red, and a yellow wire. That way you can differentiate the differences between all the wires that you have. Uh, these wires are really short, since we're going to be mounting them right here. So that means I'm going to have to run extra wiring from here to over here. I say about a good foot per per wire and then we're going to ground here and then run the other two wires here and that's it. So let's get to work. Now now that I showed you how to wire up one gauge we're going to show you how to wire up a second one. So and this is to run them in series because uh, you're going to need to run two. So what you're going to do is all the grounds you're going to just put them together all the powers you're going to put them together and then the accessory wire. Uh, this is an Innovate uh, AFR gauge so we need to be careful because uh, actually the ground, I mean the accessory wire I believe on this one is the brown wire. Uh, read your owner's manual before you start wiring things together. By default, uh, you only need these three wires. However, seen already on the other gauge that the primary colors are different on those in comparison to these. So look up your owner's manual before you wire things up. Um, once you figure out what wiring is what, do a quick test like I showed you earlier by touching them with the fuses. That way you know everything is working before you start wiring everything in place and then you have to take it all back out because you got the wrong wires hooked up. Good tip, just double check. Alright, so I looked up my owner's manual for the gauge and you're going to need these three wires. These other two wires are actually for data input. If you're going to be logging it to your ECU, or other stuff this is just for data so you're gonna have to tape these off and then get them out of the way this one doesn't actually require an accessory wire it just needs a switch power source so we'll be wiring it to the 15 amp right here 
the one that we were using originally for the other one. So power and ground, and then this third one is a headlight switch one. It's the dimming option. Um, on Mark IVs, if you have daytime running lights, it's going to automatically dim. So I don't know if it's going to bother me yet. I'm going to tape this one off for the moment because I don't think it's going to bother me as much at it being very bright. I don't know until, like I said, until we try it out later. If not, I can always go back to it and rewire it for that. So I'm not going to run that. So I'm just going to run the power and ground, which is only required for this gauge. Uh, and the ground power has to be switched. So we're going to be using the one that's right here for the switching option. In other words, when the ignition turns on, that feed is always um, has, an, has power. So ground is going to be the same ground we're going to be using. That bolt right there. Uh, on the dashboard or the main, I guess the main metal heart, um, bar that goes for the dashboard, we're going to be using that. So, we're just wire this all up. Okay, so, once we have all that set, I got my camera all nice and stationary. Um, so, we're going to be setting up this right here. So, what you're going to need to do is figure out where you want your gauge is going to be mounted first. So I want my boost gauge on the left. Get my camera all here. So you'll notice here on the bottom, there's really no way to put the bracket in there. So what you need to do is get it about a couple millimeters in, just like that. Get the bracket in there. Push the wiring out of the way, like down, just like that, and then figure out how you want it to sit. You want the boost gauge to go to the right, to the left, or to the right. I think I'm going to have it go sit like this a little bit off. see there the brackets now inside and then I only have one nut so the other one probably got lost somewhere and fell off so hopefully this is just will do its job so I'm gonna get some little little a little plier and just uh, tighten that sucker down I'll get there to that. So that's the first gauge. Second gauge will be AFR. Same process to install it. Don't worry about about freaking out or anything like that. But get that going. And then you'll see this little back portion here. This is for all the wiring to go through. So it sits flush on the back of your actual um, steering column. So now my AFR gauge is going to be mounted. Um, you'll notice if you haven't taken it off yet, these little nuts right here. I'm going to take these off. Same process. Cram it through the front. Now, on my AFR, I kind of want to want to look at look at it straight on so I don't want it sitting sideways even though it's a kind of a bulky gauge you'll see the big difference in size it's kind of annoying but I want an AFR so nothing I can do about that it's gonna bug me but I'd rather have proper air fuel readings and then something to be off so pull this back down. Remember, let the wires fold forward so you can get your bracket on there first. And then you're gonna push it down like so. Oh, 
Come on. Come on, you bloody wanker. Uh, this big one is bugging it. So what we're going to do is push that one up out of the way and then put the bracket on. Oh, this one will let me put it on without being too big. There we go. Nice and on there. And get each nut. The nice thing about these nuts, these are meant to be done by hand. So you just you can thread them on nicely and firm. That one in the back looks like it's gonna be a nuisance. Let's we'll see. Now the whole purpose for that is to make sure it's on there firm. You see right here? Both cages are on and working. Now we're going to wire everything up. Uh, we still got to run a boost hose, which was what we ran in the engine bay earlier, uh, into here so we can clip it onto that, that way we can have both gauges mounted and set on there. Okay. So now, you're going to play the guessing game here on how long this is going to run. So assuming you got it mounted. There we go. And then you're going to grab your, this is the ground wire that we're using first. So, we're going to go down, up, and over. So, this is about how long we're going to run this wire. I'd say about almost two feet. Give yourself a two more inches of slack just to be safe. And that will be your ground wire set up. Now, if you have large enough spade connectors, you can run a spade connector underneath it and call it done um, look around see if there's another screw you can probably use I see another one down here uh, this one looks like I can probably use that one easier we'll see uh, when we get to that point so now that we have the ground ran you can match all your other wiring with that length okay so power wire here I'm gonna power wire over here um, <clears throat> issue with this now you'll see already off the bat you know, this one is short and this one is long so we have to fix that so we're gonna have to match it up so a couple ways you can do that you can tie them together Get yourself some extra wire, match up the length, that way we have equal runs all the way across, they don't have to be 100% equal but keep them as close as you can. Now we use these little butt connectors here, they're not typical barrel ones, these are kind of like cap ones. I like using these a lot just because they're easy and to the point. So you're going to run this. Now this is your, your switched power source. This is the one that requires the on and off switch, so that's the 15 amp right here. 
the constant 20 is for the other one down below which we're going to run underneath and that's pretty much it that's all your wiring three wires pretty much if you dumb it all down I love these butt connectors because all you use tap them twist them on and crimp and you're done nice and easy to the point <clears throat> now last one my last wire to run or to crimp same concept or same process we need to run it, make a long one for it now before you completely tidy everything up and finish it what you want to do is test everything outside of the car because you want to make sure your wiring is correct you don't want to hodgepodge this you know and then have an issue with it later down the road so you want to test everything outside of the vehicle well inside of the vehicle but outside with all the wiring exposed that way you can test it a lot quicker if you missed up a wire or didn't crimp it correctly now is the time to fix it and get it fixed correctly because if not you put it all together let's assume that you mix the wire up and the wire starts to get really hot you can end up frying your super super expensive gauge or frying something else on your um, fuse panel here and causing a whole slew of other fun problems so try to avoid that at all costs this is why we test everything out of the car before we mount it in the car so remember what we have and I'll show you very simple since everything's already colored coded you don't have to really memorize everything but this is ground so I'm my ground is gonna be one of these bolts but I can anchor it to this corner here because this is pretty much raw steel right here so that's a ground point and now this is power switched and this is power constant so what we talked about before the constant is the one that we're gonna need to uh, use for the boost gauge so one of my little things here, here I'm gonna turn you guys this way a little bit so the 20 amp right here down below is a constant so the purple and yellow one from the boost gauge is the only one I need is a constant uh, 12 volts so and you'll see what I did here cut the wire just long enough wrap it around the fuse blade and then push it in that should give you all the wire you need now if it's correct hold on here no that's supposed to be switched I'm sorry hold on here now I got my wire confused because right now it's on No, this is my switched one. Ah, I wrapped the wrong two wires. See, this is why we double check everything. Because right now my uh, needle is on, but the gauge isn't. I was supposed to wrap the orange with the purple and then the yellow with the the red uh, my bad see this is why we do it out of the car you learn alright so I figured out I mix, I mixed the yellow with the white I mean yellow with the orange so the yellow that comes off the uh, glow shift has to be on the switched side. The orange one is the constant. So in other words, this is the one that needs power 
the entire time. Um, if not, your switch will just stay on forever, pretty much. And that's what you don't want. And once you do that, you'll be able to turn them off, turn them on, and then they'll always turn right back on to the correct. They'll turn off pretty much completely, and then they'll turn back on. You guys can see that. Off. On. It's kind of hard to see, but that's what pretty much what it is. Once you remember that, you got it all set. So now, remember... This orange is constant. The rest of the wires over here are what we call um, switched. So they only turn on when the key is on the on position on the ignition. So we're going to cap these guys off and crimp them. Because now everything's finally set. And then you're going to do the same thing over here. Cap them all, cap this wire off and crimp it. And um, you'll see here, like I said, I've been testing everything with this little ground wire just touching that piece of metal. And that's all you really need. If you really want to, you can get yourself a self-tapping screw. And you can ground it right there too. If you don't want to take anything off here, that's another option as well to uh, ground your your wire here which actually might be a better choice for um, which might actually might end up doing um, is getting a self tapping screw and tap it right there I like that option a little bit more that way I know for a fact it's a legitimate ground so let's get back to putting this sucker back together so I gave myself a little color diagram here black will be my ground blue right here will be my switched and then the solid yellow will be my constant that's going to be my wiring uh, diagram pretty much or wiring um, like color coordination that way it's simple yeah, pretty easy that way if I when I ran, run everything through and it mixes all up I don't have to worry about taking everything apart and actually trying to find what was what I already know right here right off the bat so a good little tip just use different color pieces of tape to give yourself a little dia, uh, a little chart here and you can figure out what goes to what. Okay, you see here just a little bit of electrical tape to clean things up on the back. When you wrap it back here, try to make sure it's like flat as possible. That way all the wiring doesn't bulk up and make it protrude on the back of your steering wheel column because then it'll look pretty tacky. Just want to give you guys a heads up on that. Um, make sure you clean off as best you can the steering wheel cover because you're going to be laying this obviously on there with some double sided tape so it doesn't bounce around when it's on there um, make sure you run your your hose over here for your what do we call uh, actually the, the rest of your wiring out because <laughs> we got to run that O2 sensor I have an extra port on my, uh, my downpipe so I can use this on there we're going to show you where to run this wiring too for your O2 sensor uh, we're going to use the same port uh, that we use to run the uh, boost hose for this so that's going to go through there but then from there we're going to be going um, we got to route it kind of weird so we have to keep that in mind so let's get over there to route that and then we're going to route it from inside the engine bay same hole that you popped in through so we'll, I don't need to show you where to do that but okay give me a second so the part here remember we were talking about right going down this way right here you're going to try to cram your hand down here and run the your two, two, your two wires the one for the vacuum I mean one vacuum hose and then your your main wire for your air fuel ratio gauge so this is where it becomes tricky so because you gotta figure out where the wire is gonna feed through
And I'm trying to film this all at once. I'm sure you guys a good station there. There we go. So that's where we're going to feed it through, okay guys? And this is for your vacuum tube and for your boost hose and your gauge. There's one. There's the first one. And now follow the process again. We get number two. This is a lot more floppier, so... There we go. Ah, well, you see that. Let me get it Now that those two wires pulled out... So we have the AFR cable, and then our boost hose. So the AFR cable is pretty long. It plugs in down here. This is great because we're going to need the slack when we pull out the other one. Um, as a recommendation, I always recommend uh, taping uh, any type of clipping cables together just for a little added support. It's not needed, but I like doing it just because it gives it that extra little little blanket of support. That way it doesn't yank out for any reason you're doing them when you're doing your wiring or you're, you're pulling everything through. And then your boost hose here it goes in the back of this bad boy. You guys can see that. It goes into here. Now, since that got went on too easy, we're gonna need a clamp to clamp that sucker down. Um, mainly because that probably is gonna pop out. That's in there too easy, so got to hunt down a little clamp. Or what I like to use too is zip ties. Zip ties work really well on these. Um, grab a little zip tie. Get one that's pretty thick. This is I think a five millimeter zip tie. Tighten it down as hard as you can without breaking it, obviously, and then cut it off. <coughs> and that way, this is nice and secure. So now we have that AFR, and then our wiring. So what we're going to do is kind of do a reverse um, process here. Um, now the issue that you're going to have, and I'll show you that in just a minute, is that right here, if you guys can see that on the steering wheel, the um, steering wheel cover itself, um, this guy right here, I don't want to make a hole in this, this is really nice, so I want to figure out a way that I can mount and run all the wiring underneath this but I don't think there's gonna be a way without cutting it well I'll do some looking right now I really don't want to damage this this is a really nice piece of leather and it's like I said it's a really nice piece without any damage on it so I'll give that a moment before I decide on that but the next thing I need to do is run my wiring over that we just made What we're going to do before you do that is you're going to pull 
on your AFR cable out of the way. Same with your boost hose. Pull it out of the way. becomes tricky. Because there's a lot of wiring involved in this. So, the gauge pod mounted, uh, actually it didn't work out for me, so I had to do some uh, modification to the gauge pod, not the gauge pod, gauge pod holder, but the actual steering wheel column. Um, what I ended up doing, I had to cut off the face of my actual column here, like cut it off, legitimately just cut off the front face, and then shave it down about 2 to 3 millimeters, because the AFR gauge right here, you'll see, sits um, way far out than uh, my boost gauge so the issue there is that when I turn it would hit it and then I had to angle this a uh, little further up to make it actually sit in place it was a nuisance sorry I didn't film any of that because it you might not fall into that problem if you guys get uh, shallow uh, face uh, boost gauges or uh, gauges for these I might actually swap this gauge and move it over here to the pillar which I really don't want to do, but I might end up doing it and probably putting an oil temp gauge here with a nice fl uh, flush mount like this, where this one sits a lot more flush and it doesn't have to affect it, and that way I can push this further down and not make it look as bad. Um, but for the moment, it's functional. It will work for what I need it, uh, need it for. So now it's time to wire up the actual gauges over here to the bottom fuse panel here, and we're gonna show you what we did. Remember, we're gonna re-show you everything and then you guys can proceed from there alright now that we got the wiring done remember what we said before the yellow is switched I mean the blue is switched the solid yellow is a uh, constant and then the ground is behind this panel you don't have to see it but if we take off the panel there's my ground cable right back here uh, easy and out of the way gotta make sure this is back in here and didn't break off uh, that's all done I um, had a problem, one of my uh, ground, wave, uh, ground wires pulled out, so my uh, boost gauge wasn't lighting up. I fixed it already, um, so I didn't want to take the whole column off, so I just took the bottom piece off right here and then got to that. Nothing you guys need to worry about. Um, for the uh, sensor, uh, they recommend that you mount the sensor two feet away from the turbocharger or right after the, um, the collector. Uh, so that's what we ended up doing since I don't have a spot for it right after the turbocharger since my main AFR the cars uh, wide band is plugged into it, which is more important than the secondary wide band um, so I mounted that further down so the percentages or the air fuel will be slightly off it won't be hundred percent but it'd be better than not having anything visual representation of us seeing an actual fuel um, air fuel ratio showing on there at all so uh, that's done so now I'm going to show you guys how we routed the um, the the cabling for the uh, AFR so you guys can see all that um, remember we started from the engine bay into here so that's all done you guys don't need to see that anymore we're going to go to the engine bay and show you guys a little how we routed everything so it's out away away from the heat as best as possible all right let's go So now you see here, here's the wiring to that grommet from earlier today. And then we ran it down. And you'll see right here where my finger is at. You guys can see that. Let me see. I think you guys can see that. But 
we pretty much routed it along the power steering line um, all the way down underneath the car and we're gonna go over here down below so it goes through here to the subframe down right here and you'll see there's a sensor right there it's about three feet away from the turbocharger um, and then the extra slack we routed inside the car I made sure I kept the slack inside the car instead of outside we zip tied the uh, the sensor to one of the main clips here and then made tucked it underneath the heat shield that way it doesn't go anywhere but that's pretty much it here's the clip for the actual sensor uh, these are waterproof they have a water uh, o-ring on the inside so these are okay to be exposed outside they're allowed to be left like that so that's good I zip tied it around there done and then ran all the wiring underneath with the factory wiring through here you guys can see it's kinda hard to see but you'll see where it's routed and then um, <coughs> hopefully you guys can see that but let me see where's the steering rack you see right there on the steering rack there's some zip ties that's where we zip tied it to the power steering line underneath the heat shield so and we wrapped it with exhaust wrap uh, just to give it extra shielding and that's pretty much it that's how we routed our um, AFR underneath the car sorry for the poor lighting lighting but it's getting dark but that's pretty much it and that's how you route your boost gauge and your and your AFR and that's how you wire everything up so thanks for watching PHL's Garage today peace out and have a good one